very excited today because after I'm done meeting with you, discussing some issues, I'll have the opportunity to see the 100th butter cow. Now, coming from Detroit, that's not an opportunity we get every day. It is also a great opportunity to see how agriculture is doing in the United States. Because coming from Detroit, coming from a manufacturing background, it is heartening not only to see the farmers producing, but to see the type of manufacturing that was done in this country when we were producing wealth, when we were selling cars, when we were growing crops to feed the world and to provide the arsenal of democracy and an engine for prosperity. Today we wonder if we can still do that. Today we wonder if our institutions, be they the large, big government in Washington, or the failed financial institutions on Wall Street, are indifferent to us, the sovereign American people. We hear talk of forsaken Americans. We hear talk of the endangering of the American dream. And we hear many Americans wonder if they matter anymore. My response, and the response of the American people is simply this. You matter more than ever. Throughout the history of this country, we've been faced with great challenges. And in every period of time, no matter how difficult, the American people have transcended them and bequeathed to their children a better country, a conserved and improved experiment in liberty and self-government. We will do no less. In terms of getting this economy moving, we need action, and we need action now. And unfortunately, what we saw from the administration, and in fairness, in the debate last night, was a failure to comprehend the nature of our economic challenge that is hurting so many Americans and getting them to question what their pursuit of prosperity will be in the 21st century. Will it be a better road, or will it be a dead end of American decline? We are in a deflationary period, a great contraction. What has happened is the failed Wall Street banks that were bailed out are showing the greatest contraction of credit since the Great Depression. Now we can talk about tax relief, which I support. We can talk about regulatory relief, which I support. We can talk about all the above energy strategies, which I support. But if we do not address the failure of the large banks to be restructured, to recapitalize without taxpayer money, to get credit flowing down to the entrepreneurs and the workers and the innovators who will not only grow the economy in the near term, but will grow and shape this economy for the 21st century, we will be trapped with a doomed generation who economically will mirror what happened in Japan in the 1990s. I appreciate that this is not the easiest talking point to be putting across. But as always, I believe that the wisdom of the American people exceeds that of their elected leaders, myself included. And from hearing and meeting with people, we understand that the inability to access that credit has not only impaired the promotion of prosperity, it has impaired the hopes of individuals for their own future pursuits and that, of more importantly, of their children. Amidst this stagnation, we also have to face the reality that we are a country at war with brave men and women in the field. And that the United States, as it has always done in its past, has met this unsought struggle, not merely as a matter of victory and defeat or conquest over territory, but we have also understood what Lincoln taught us long ago, that in seeking to defend our own liberty, we extend liberty to the oppressed and enslaved. And that is why precipitous withdrawal in Iraq or in Afghanistan will not only endure the security and hopes for liberty of the people of those lands, it will also impair our own, because America will have broken her promise to those peoples. And the individuals who will fill the vacuum if we leave prematurely will butcher and kill their way back into power, and the problems that they create will not be left anywhere but on our doorstep. These are the challenges we face, and again, it is a difficult time. But as always, 
The solution will not be to take your decisions, to take your money, to take your dreams and put them in a highly centralized bureaucratic Washington. It will be to do what we see throughout the world happening, what we see throughout our homes happening. In the 21st century, the future is not big government, it is self-government. It is the empowerment of the individual. It is the empowerment of you. And once we can get the government to realize that it must mirror the changes that are occurring in every family's lives and every business's lives, and that it must become citizen-driven and more horizontal and democratized, we will ensure that this nation will get through this hard road to better days. And in the future, other generations will look back at you and thank you for your wisdom <laughs> and for your courage to meet the challenges that we face. With that, remembering that I do not represent Washington to my constituents, I represent them to Washington as their servant, I'll take a couple questions.